So hi guys, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at Alibaba Group. Uh, the stock started at close to $227 this year, uh, but is now trading at only $160 as of me recording this, uh, which shows almost a 43% decline uh, this year alone. And if we look at and if we compare it to last year, we're looking at almost a 50% decline during this time. Uh, what has actually happened is that uh, the Chinese Communist Party or the CCP has put in increased restrictions on majority of the largest tech companies uh, in China alongside um, tutoring services and gaming companies in China as well. So companies like Alibaba, JD and Tencent have been quite affected uh, by what the Communist Party has been doing which is putting increased restrictions. So Alibaba specifically uh, got hit two main segments. So one, they had a $2.8 billion fine that they paid off over the last, uh, over the beginning of 2021. Um, and also they had uh, the stoppage of its IPO for its Ant Group, which was set to be one of the largest IPOs ever recorded in history. Um, and the government came in and stopped it last October. And that's really what, uh, triggered off the start of this collapse and the increased regulations of Alibaba. Uh, despite this, the stock has actually increased its revenue quite significantly. Uh, it uh, grew its revenue and earnings at a very solid rate. Um, it beat on its uh, earnings and it only narrowly missed on revenue, which was due to the $2.8 billion fine that they ended up having to pay. So if you look at the stock price right now, just one thing, it's trading at a PE ratio of 19. And if you look at the growth potential it has, which is arguably more than Apple or Google or Amazon or Facebook, um, uh, this stock is still trading at dirt cheap prices. Uh, the stock price of $160 uh, was last seen close to August in 2019. And the stock really hasn't moved since the beginning of towards the end of 2017, where it was trading at 190. And now at the end of 2021 or towards the end of 2021, it is trading at only $160. But despite this, between 2017 and 2021, uh, the stock has grown its revenue quite a lot. It has increased its free cash flow. Uh, it's increased its uh, revenue. It's increased its customers. It's increased its e-commerce business and it's increased uh, uh, a lot of things, making the company a lot better than where it was trading off maybe in 2017 or 2018, but still it's trading cheaper than it was then. So I believe this is a very, very, very good opportunity uh, to come into the market and pick up a stock that is looking to soar over the next decade at really, really cheap prices. Uh, so the first thing I wanna look at is Alibaba's uh, annual active customers. So Alibaba has 1.18 billion global annual active customers and they added 45 million over the last quarter. Uh, out of this, 912 million are in China where they added 21 million and 265 are international. Um, and they had a growth of 24 million international annual active customers there as well. Uh, we'll be looking at their earnings results later on. Uh, but one thing I want to talk about is that Alibaba's has a lot more than just e-commerce that it does. So although e-commerce is its biggest revenue generator and probably the only reason why they're still in business right now, they have been investing quite heavily uh, into smaller startups and into other services as well and have been really diversifying their business. So this includes uh, uh, smaller uh, markets like Tower Grocery and Fresh Hippo Market, uh, which increased the which increased their gross merchandise value two hundred percent quarter over quarter, and their gross floor area two hundred and sixty percent quarter over quarter as well. Uh, this includes apps like Idlefish and Taobao Deals, which have a hundred and a hundred million uh, monthly active users and one hundred and ninety million annual active customers, uh, respectively. Uh, and this includes Lazada. Uh, as well, which increased then uh, orders 90% year over year as well. So on top of its e-commerce, uh, it also has created quite a big network of smaller uh, brands that they've been investing quite heavily into. Um, and should this turn out very well, they could have multiple very, very strong revenue streams uh, in the years to come, maybe five to 10 years down the line. And the investments they have been making right now can be very, very worth it. 
Uh, despite this, the investments they have been making have slightly put some strain on their key ratios. Uh, this includes their uh, operating margins coming uh, lower slightly, and this also includes uh, their net profit margins also decreasing uh, since its IPO. Uh, but their revenue has been increasing due to these investments, so I still think they're a good deal looking into the future. Uh, so as this is kind of tying into what I was talking earlier over the last five years, they have just uh, delivered quite explosive revenue growth. Their revenue is going from about 20 billion to 116 billion, which is nearly six times over the last five years. Uh, during this period, their margin profile has deteriorated. This includes their uh, gross profit margin going down from about 65% uh, to 40% and their uh, Operating margin also going down from close to 30% uh, or close to 35% down to 11% But despite this they have been aggressively diversifying their e-commerce business and they've been venturing out into other areas Like cloud computing like digital media and entertainment uh, Which could provide multiple strong revenue streams in the future and which I believe is a very good investment uh, digging, uh, digging a little deeper into their numbers uh, we can see the majority of their revenue comes from its core e-commerce businesses. Uh, at the quarter end on June 30th, 2021, Alibaba's commerce revenue made up nearly 87% of its business. And since the Chinese government hasn't really attacked their e-commerce business too much, uh, other than a $2.8 billion fine, I think the stock is actually pretty a uh, pretty healthy spot uh, given uh, that their main business as an, hasn't actually... Uh, been targeted by the government too much. So unlike Amazon, where the AWS serves as a profit center, Alibaba's operating income comes from mainly its e-commerce operations. In the last 12 months, Alibaba has generated nearly $32 billion in operating income, which is almost entirely from its e-commerce operations. So right now, Alibaba's non-core business lines, including cloud computing, digital media, and entertainment, contribute only a small fraction of Alibaba's total revenues and remain unprofitable. So while this is a risk that this is a very big gamble that they're taking, should these not become profitable in the near term, Alibaba could start bleeding money. But I believe this risk is worth taking given if they target, uh, because currently they are staying afloat due to their um, due to their uh, e-commerce business and they're kind of using their e-commerce business as leverage to invest into all of these other uh, sectors and if it turns out very very well uh, they could create multiple strong uh, forms of revenue uh, which would be very very good for the company and very very good for those invested in the company and their shareholders as well. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is Alibaba's recent earnings. So in the most recent quarter, they posted $32 billion in revenue, which is 34% year over year, uh, which was a slight miss from what that was uh, what analysts expected. They had $4.8 billion in operating income, which was down 11% year over year. Uh, they had $6.9 billion in net income, which was up 10%. Uh, their diluted earnings per share of $2.54 was up 12%, and this was a beat as well. Um, and they had $3.2 billion in free cash flow, which was down 43%, which is mainly due to paying $1.4 billion out of the $2.8 billion fine from their key, uh, free cash flow there. So as we can see, as a whole, it was a pretty solid quarter, apart from the impact of the $2.8 billion fine, which was booked in quarter four and started being paid in quarter one and throughout quarter two as well. So if we look at the full fiscal year of 2021, their revenue of 109 billion was up 41%. Um, their operating income, which was 13.6 billion, was down 2%, which was once again mainly due to the fine. Their gap net income was of 22 billion was up 10% as well. Their adjusted net income of 26 billion was up 30%. Their diluted earnings per share was $8.35, and their free cash flow was 26 billion, which is up 32%. Two things, to, uh, three things to keep note here. Their revenue was up 41%, their net income was up 30%, and their free cash flow was up 32%. But if we go back and we look at the stock price over the last year, we can actually see the stock price was down close to 50%. So if this isn't a clear sign that the market has, re has been reading this completely wrong, um, the company is actually growing at a very, very healthy rate. And... The growth that they promise uh, of maybe 15 to 20 percent 
although it may not seem as flashy as smaller companies, uh, they're currently trading at extremely cheap prices and their revenue and profit have been going up really, really well over the last year. And I cannot stress this enough, how good of an opportunity this is to go into the market right now. So with all these results, they show that the $2.8 billion fine had only had moderate impacts in fiscal of 2021. Um, and as a result of this fine, the gap net income grew at 10% instead of the 30% that it was expected. So uh, if we look here that they have to pay $15.5 billion over five years as they uh, basically have to force, uh, they're being forced to invest uh, into industrialization, agriculture, and small to medium-sized uh, businesses uh, by the CCP. Uh, but currently, if we look at this, that uh, if they grow at 30%, they have uh, uh, $28.6 billion. Uh, but even if they pay the $3.1 billion out of their earnings straight up, uh, that's still a 16% growth. And a 16% growth where they're trading at 16.5 uh, times gap earnings 20.5 times adjusted earnings, 3.9 times sales, and 13.9 times operating cash flows. These are very, very low multiples. And if the earnings growth decelerates to 15.9%, then using the gap PE ratio of 16.5, we get a PEG ratio of 1.03. And if you're looking at a really, really good growing company, you're looking at PEG ratios of less than one. So a PEG ratio of just over one, taking into account this fine, shows that once this fine is over, once the CCP reduces its uh, exposure on bar uh, and reduces their regulations, uh, this could actually be a very good turning point for Alibaba and they will start shooting up. So a question that I have been asked uh, in the past is, why does Alibaba, or why do you think the Chinese Communist Party will actually reduce uh, Alibaba's uh, regulations in the future? So for two main reasons, one is that Alibaba is actually part of their plan to expand overseas, try to uh, expand their control through the private sector and have more and more people uh, resilient uh, on, uh, have more and more people uh, shopping from Chinese related products, which just brings in more government, uh, more money for their government uh, through taxes uh, and more money into China rather than money going out of China. Um, another thing is that China has had a growing middle class um, and because of this, they uh, the growing middle class relies quite heavily on online shopping um, and as the middle class grows, the services that they need to require uh, need to be uh, functioning and Alibaba is one of those services that are quite used by the Chinese middle class and for these two reasons, I don't believe that the Chinese Communist Party will actually uh, drive Alibaba to the ground. They might rein them in when they're getting too powerful or, or try to keep them down when they're going too high. But overall, I still believe that Alibaba uh, will not have extended regulation concerns uh, from the CCP looking at long-term growth uh, there. So the risk from uh, risks and challenges, I think there's two main risks and challenges. Uh, one is continued regulatory scrutiny from the Chinese government. Um, that is definitely a risk. I just talked about it in the previously, uh, in the previous few minutes. Uh, I explained why I don't think that the Chinese government will actually have extended regulatory scrutiny. Uh, two main reasons. One, uh, because it is part of their plan to expand their, uh, influence overseas. Um, and also it is almost a requirement for the Chinese middle class to use Alibaba as a service. Um, and two is unprofitable investments. So as I previously mentioned, Alibaba invests uh, quite a lot into smaller uh, startup companies um, and are uh, investing quite a lot into uh, uh, diversifying their uh, company into digital and commerce, uh, into uh, cloud computing and others. Uh, but much of Baba's growth uh, going forward will depend on its pro uh, prosperity fund investments actually being profitable. If, this, if the SMEs it sponsors runs at a persistent losses, then the $15.5 billion in the spending company has planned will be as good as a new tax. As I showed earlier, Baba can make uh, $3.1 billion in pure cash payouts every year and still grow, but the growth would be much more muted than if it looked like it was going to be at the start of the year. So on top of the 15.5 billion that they've been basically forced to invest over the next five years, uh, they have been investing a lot into smaller companies and smaller services, 
So if we just go back here, we see Idle Fish, Taba Deals, Lazada, uh, Taba Grocery, um, and other uh, different services that they've been diversifying into. So while they have started to take control and these are slowly becoming larger, larger segments of uh, Alibaba's revenue, there is still a great risk that it doesn't turn out and Alibaba is basically relying on its e-commerce to grow uh, to basically keep it afloat in the years to come. So although the risk is there, I still believe that once again, Alibaba's investments have a pretty good chance to turn profitable. And even if they don't turn profitable, they still have their e-commerce to rely back on. The last thing we're going to go through is quickly go through their uh, key ratios. So we see earnings per share has been consistently increasing. Book value per share has been consistently increasing. Operating cash flow, cap spending and free cash flow have been consistently increasing. Uh, their net margin uh, has been decreasing basically over the last few years, but a net margin of 20% is still very healthy. A return on equity of 16 or 17% is quite low, but still not too bad. Uh, their interest coverage of 35 years is very, very solid, and their debt to equity of 0.14 is very, very cheap. So Alibaba's balance sheet is looking very, very healthy. Last thing we're going to go through is quickly just the technical analysis. Uh, you've seen this graph at the beginning of the video. The stock has come down from basically $320 in October all the way down to $160 uh, now in September. So it is trading well below its 50, its 220 day simple moving averages. So the stock is very clearly in a downtrend. But one thing I do want to point out is if we just draw this line here and we just look over the past few years. The last time the stock was at this price was first, uh, basically, even after the COVID pandemic, it didn't go this low. But before that, we're looking uh, about June or August in 2019. And the furthest we can go back where the stock was at this price was August of 2017. So since August of 2017, this stock has gone up, gone down, gone up and come down again. Now, one thing I want you to compare uh, August of 2017, Alibaba, there was a very big hype about this company. And because of that, uh, a lot of people were investing into it. And maybe someone watching this video was also investing into the company as of then, but maybe slightly worried to invest in it right now. If you compare Alibaba between 2017 and Alibaba now, the company is bigger, the company is more profitable, the company has more diversified, the company has more customers, and the company has a better balance sheet. Yet, People were paying it in 2017 and very, it's probably possible that very similar people uh, don't want to buy it right now. So once again, this is why I see Alibaba has changed drastically over the last three, three and a half, four years. And yet the stock price hasn't. And I cannot urge this enough that Alibaba is a very, very good investment uh, with the growth that it promises in the future. So as always, if you do choose to invest, still make sure to do your own due diligence. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.